passports check. So after four months, we made it back to Jining, China. And uh, we were trying to go to Lhasa, Tibet last time we were here, but we didn't get the visa, so we couldn't go. But we set all that up, it's all arranged now, and we're about to hop on a 22 hour train ride, right? Yep. Overnight train ride. It's the highest one in the world. Those are all the mountain passes, like, I don't know how, like 12,000 feet. Well, pretty high. But it goes all the way to Lhasa, Tibet, and uh, that's what we're doing. So here we go! Quite the elegant chair you're in. It is. Now, this is my kind of chair. It's the princess chair. We're uh, waiting to get on a train to Lhasa. So we're like uh, seven hours into our train ride. Night's almost to come, and it's been four four hours. We're four hours in the train ride, not seven. But uh, it's got some crazy scenery so far. Like it's like we're on the surface of the moon. It's amazing just how much is out there in this world. We got some uh, mushroom and vegetables for dinner. Lombard's got some food. It's the food car going so far. Good. We're 20 hours into 21. Yeah. One to go. We're almost there. We slept good. What did we just watch? Seven years in Tibet uh, with the Tibetan scenery out the window. Very right. cool. Even in our miserable condition, we feel the lure of Tibet's holiest city, home of the Dalai Lama. Only a few foreigners had penetrated its mysteries. Well, it was a 24-hour train ride and we made it to Lhasa. We made it. We made it. Good God. The train is packed. But yeah, it was, wasn't it? It's like the Polar Express to Tibet. <laughs> oh, here we are. Welcome to Tibet. Oh, go ahead, Mom. There's Hey. Well, Good Thank you so much. We made it. Sure did. Wow. Lombard just got slammed in the elevator. Where's our room? Oh, in the dark hall. 
So after a 24 hour train ride, we finally made it to Lhasa. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go see that big old temple today. And in order to get into Lhasa, you have to book it through a tour agency and get all these special permits. So we're gonna be going with a, a tour group and uh, I'm excited to see how it's gonna turn out. But when we were on the train yesterday, we went over this, uh, it's like a 17,000 foot mountain pass in the middle of the night. And I woke up and I was just like, ooh, you know, it's kind of hard to breathe. And I looked out the window and it's just like, we're plowing through snow and there's like a blizzard going on outside. And it's just, it was the coolest train ride ever. But uh, yeah, excited to check this place out. Yeah, different three kinds of the incense. This is a juniper. Juniper. Yeah. Totally different than other juniper. It is this juniper only grow on high mountain, more than 5,000 meters. Please pay attention to these things. This is uh, our prayer, prayer wheel, prayer wheel. People who are coming to the monastery, collect with these, the local people when they come to the monastery, they move in prayer wheel with their hand, moving clockwise. Why? They're moving the prayer with their hands. We respect, we believe. All of the, in the animals, all of the human beings, all of the gods who live in the will of life, they have a lot of suffering. All of the same things, same hope, same wish, more peaceful, less suffering. If you're more relaxed from the surfing, you have to need enough the good karma. So how you want to set the good karma? Three steps. Body, mind, speech. People who are the moving the prayer wheel, they believe when they move in the prayer wheel, they get good karma, good karma with their body. It's so nice to get away from the hustle and bustle of the city, up in this little monastery. Karma, good karma for my next life. Is mom bear getting good karma for her next life? It's all about How's the next the feel? life. <laughs> Feels good. All of the guests are the first hiking area to the had to go pet the puppies. Okay. Aww. You spooked them. Eat your beans. You got beans for dinner? Eat your beans. So right now we're walking to the top of this little hill. These beautifully painted rocks get a view of the temple. And I'm sure can feel the altitude. It's like uh, 12,000 feet, maybe 20 to 12,500 right now. But uh, probably higher than that actually. Got a beautiful view of the city though. It's such a peaceful place. So all these uh, monks here are writing new scripture. Not sure what the scripture means or what it's for, but it's pretty cool. And apparently they've only done this twice. And it's a very rare gathering to witness, so pretty stoked for that. Exhibition. 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 They're writing scriptures. Yeah, writing exhibition. Different shifts. This is second time. Oh, 
It's a pretty cool first experience at Tibet. Yeah, they said there used to be 14,000 monks here and now there are only 450. And why is that? Because they limited, the government limited down to 450. Yeah. I'm not supposed to talk about it. I don't know. <laughs> Nobody heard me. Thank you. Yak milk ice cream. That was really good. More sour than I thought. What do you think? Yak yogurt ice cream. Like it? Mm-hmm. Yes. Kind of tangy. Thank you. <laughs> you got another welcome. <laughs> Stuck right in there. Good job. Some flannel for you, honey. So we're walking down all these neat little back alleyways to the palace. What was the palace's name again? I think it's a I think it's a monastery right now, and then the palace later. Oh, uh, monastery Matala. first, palace later. Must be that golden one that we saw. I don't know if you can see that, but the mountains snowed a bunch last night. The mountains are all covered in snow. So beautiful. See that? See those mountains up there? They're gorgeous. It's weird because everyone's going one way. <laughs> I don't, no one's going the other way. I wonder, <laughs> wonder where we're heading. It's a one-way street. It's a one -way Clockwise. Street. It's cool because everyone's like chanting as we walk and we're all going towards the big palace off in the distance. It's a one-way. So I'm uh, currently at the Jokong Temple in Tibet. Wow, I can just see views of snow-capped mountains in the back. You probably can't see it gets too bright. But uh, feel the altitude. And they don't allow cameras, photography inside the temples. But uh, you go into these things and just the art and the architecture, it's, it's unreal, it's phenomenal. And I have to talk about it because it's just such a profound fascination to me. But it feels like you're walking into a DMT trip when you enter these temples and so there's like these big entities and the walls are have all these complex uh, like intricate artwork and uh, I came up to this it was a huge statue made out of gold and on this statue there were blue stemmed gold capped psilocybin mushrooms growing all around the statue and like it was without a doubt they're growing these little bunches and i want to take a photo so bad but it's not allowed inside the temple so it's it's up in here um, but uh and it's fascinating because i've had mushroom trips where i've seen golden temples or palaces made out of light that looked exactly like the one that i was looking at and like i had the most profound like kundalini almost where these chills were just sent from my spine all the way up to my head and down to my toes and it was just it was a really profound kind of experience like having those experiences in the past and coming to this palace in tibet and actually seeing firsthand that there's religious documentation of this in these temples it's so fascinating to me